Now, a couple days ago, I put up a bit of a request, asking for everyone's best what-if idea or scenario in Star Wars, with the intention of then taking the top-rated idea, the one with the most likes or thumbs up, and making a video or even a series of videos that explored how I think things would change or play out based off of it, and depending on the idea itself and how much or little I thought I could do with it, I turned it into either anything from a shorter, more analytical discussion to even a longer, full-blown story, and that I turned this whole idea into an ongoing series, assuming people were enjoying it, of course. And though there were tons and tons of great in-universe ideas, some of which I'd never even begun to consider but were just fantastic and got my imagination churning, the winner turned out to be an out-of-universe idea from E-A-R-A-I-H-A, -A -A, whose question was, what if George Lucas never sold Star Wars to Disney? And though, no, this wasn't exactly the type of what-if I was looking for, I figured since it won and so many people seemed interested in the question, I'd address it anyway and let the vote continue for a few more days and then go with whatever in-universe what-if question finished second place. And I'll talk more about the details or how I plan to run this thing towards the end of the video, because if you're just here or clicked for the topic at hand, I don't want to keep rambling on about this. So anyway then, what if George Lucas had never sold Lucasfilm, and hence Star Wars, to Disney? How would things be different right now? Well, I think the biggest and most obvious difference is we would have gotten a very different version of the sequels, and yes, Lucas was planning on doing episodes 7 through 9 himself before he sold. I know for years after doing the prequels, he sort of maintained that there was no episode 7, that the story was done, but either he changed his mind about that and thought there was more to tell or there was maybe always more to tell, but he didn't want to do it or wasn't sure if he'd ever do them for one reason or another. And I know a lot of people will say it was all the hate he was getting from the fans over the prequels that not only soured him from doing more Star Wars, but ultimately led him to selling to Disney eventually, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you consider he began production on Clone Wars pretty much right after he was done with the prequels, and that the show was based off the prequels that everyone was hating him for. A very odd move if all that hate he was getting over them was truly bothering him. Also at the same time, Lucas wanted to do a live action show called Star Wars Underworld. Even had somewhere between 50 to 100 scripts written for it. But production never started because it would cost way, way too much, back then at least, to make them look the way he wanted them to look. He wanted them to essentially have the look and feel of theatrical Star Wars, but on the small screen, and was even saying some 15 years ago that the real future of entertainment was television, that a shift would happen as CGI technology got better and cheaper. Furthermore, beyond just eventually deciding he wanted to do a sequel trilogy after all, Lucas also had plans to do other movies outside the saga, to essentially do anthology films like we did get with Disney, he was even in talks with Lawrence Kasdan about writing a Han Solo film, and Kasdan, along with his son, did eventually write that film for Disney. We also know that Lucas was planning to retire shortly before he did end up selling, even apparently said so to Kasdan back then, as quoted in this interview. And I don't think it's any coincidence that Lucas was talking about retiring and sold to Disney in late 2012, and then got married and had a child in 2013. In fact, in a rather recent interview, Lucas said, they were one of the main reasons he sold. He wanted to spend time with his new family, to enjoy life for a little while, he was quoted as saying, which I don't think anyone can blame him for. Though apparently before he did sell, he considered just retiring and finding someone else to run the company, but said that wouldn't be like retirement because he'd basically still want to manage everything. That's just how he is. Which is also likely why, not that I claim to know the mind and motivations of George Lucas, but if I had to guess, that's why he made Kathleen Kennedy president of Lucasfilm, a close, long-time friend of his. Because I don't think he wanted to let go entirely and thought he could still have some influence over the company through her, and maybe quite a bit. Certainly enough to have his version of the sequel trilogy made, which of course did not turn out to be the case. And so after addressing why he sold, let's get back to the question of what if he didn't sell to Disney? Well, in a lot of ways, at least on the surface, I think things look the same as they do right now. We would still have gotten a sequel trilogy, though the Lucas version of it, and I'll talk more about that in a bit. It also sounds like he would have still given us anthology-style films. We probably would have gotten a very similar version of the movie Solo, since Lucas wanted cast and to write it. And again, along with his son, he did write it for Disney. I think without question, since Lucas was already looking in this direction over a decade ago, 
we would get a series or multiple series on a streaming platform. Maybe he strikes a deal with Netflix or still partners with Disney as they launch Disney+. Plus. Who knows who gets what? Instead of The Mandalorian, though, Star Wars Underworld would have probably finally seen the light of day, again, along with maybe another series or two. One very interesting change is that Clone Wars almost certainly doesn't get cancelled. It would carry on for at least a few more seasons, as was originally planned, and who knows how long it runs overall. It may still be running right now for all we know, though I highly doubt that since it was a very expensive show to make. I think we may or may not have seen something like Rebels then come after it, since Rebels was basically the original idea for Clone Wars that Dave Filoni and Henry Gilroy sort of came up with for an animated show. And it was an idea Filoni must have really liked, considering he eventually made that show, which means he may have eventually convinced Lucas to let him make it as well. Though who knows how different it may have ended up being, if not under the Disney umbrella, if you will, and on Disney XD with a Y7 rating. We may have gotten a slightly more mature, more Clone Wars-esque version of Rebels, which, even though I enjoyed Rebels as is, is certainly an intriguing thought. One of the biggest changes then is I don't think we see the Expanded Universe cancelled and or sort of a reset of the canon. I think the EU would have carried on and would still be carrying on right now as a separate or independent timeline, just as Lucas always maintained it was. Lucas always said the EU was separate from his version of Star Wars. Along these same lines, I obviously don't think we see LucasArts shut down like it was under Disney. And though it's hard to predict just what games we would have seen over the past almost decade now, I can certainly tell you we would have seen a lot more of them, a lot more than what EA has cranked out. We also would have almost certainly seen the game Star Wars 1313, which was in production when LucasArts got shut down, and was a casualty of that. And along with all this, I don't think we ever get books, comics, games, or anything else technically set in the official canon as we do now. I think only what Lucas himself is directly responsible for would be part of, quote-unquote, his Star Wars. There would still be the EU, as I said, and then everything else Lucas was doing or had done, which would of course expand by more films and series as time went on. The real interesting question would then come after Lucas did eventually retire and completely step away, or mostly step away, or after he passed away. Would he sort of then say that everything henceforth, now that he's gone, is not a part of his Star Wars, or would he let someone else, someone like Dave Filoni perhaps, literally carry on his legacy, and sort of decree that he was creating quote-unquote real Star Wars now. It would certainly sort of fit the theme of Star Wars or of the Jedi, where Padawan learns from the Master and then becomes the Master himself, and I've always thought of Filoni as the Padawan of Lucas anyway. Either way here, I do think there is or was meant to be a whole different sort of aspect to this question of what if Lucas didn't sell to Disney, which is how would fans have reacted to everything if Lucas had done it, and mainly how would they have reacted to the sequels, and what state would the fan base be in, run, in right now overall, which sure is impossible to know for certain without actually seeing and experiencing what Lucas would have done, especially again with the sequels. However, based off what we've heard about his version of them, and we do know Lucas would have doubled down on midichlorians and all of that, he said he would have explored the microbiotic realm. Well, I certainly do think some fans would not have liked that, I think we may have likely still seen some sort of split in the fan base over the sequels anyway. Now, would it have gotten as sort of bad or heated as the one that actually happened over the sequels we got? Again, that's impossible to say, but there's certainly always a chance, microbiotic realm or not, that they may have turned out terrific all around and been an amazing cap to the whole saga. Perhaps if Lucas brings in just the right writers and directors, and acts more like the great overseer or mastermind, kind of like he did with the original trilogy, we end up with a masterpiece almost all Star Wars fans love, but unfortunately, we'll never know one way or another. So again here, in a lot of ways, I think things actually play out very similar. Again, on the surface at least. I don't know if we see anywhere near as much content from Lucas that we have under Disney. I don't know that there'd be 10 shows in development right now if Disney wasn't in charge. Maybe more like two or three at most under Lucas. I also think under Lucas, the EU is absolutely still going and going strong. I don't think he would have ever had any interest in doing anything with it one way or another. He would have just let it be. And the one area we no doubt would have gotten more content was in the game department. And who knows what classics we've missed out on thanks to EA. Though they have given us some pretty decent games, just not many of them. 
all right here and to very briefly continue to touch on or mostly reiterate what i was talking about at the top about this new what if series i'd like to do well i'm going to leave the initial ideas for each one of them that i end up doing to you where when i'm done with one you'll basically get a chance to submit a new idea or what if idea and then you can all vote with a thumbs up because i love democracy and then i'll run with whatever idea wins and explore that idea Again, either in a one-and-done sort of breakdown video, much like this one kind of was, where I just discuss possible outcomes, or maybe in story form, which may stretch multiple videos, much like many of my old what-if stories did. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think would have happened if Lucas never sold to Disney. Am I on the right track here, or am I way off? Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time... Thanks for watching.